Hey guys, welcome to Reddit Brew. Today, I will be reading from the r slash entitled people subreddit. So let's jump into it. I'm going to take the most valuable things from my deceased sister's family while no one's home. A few years ago, my boyfriend's mom died suddenly. Nobody was prepared. He's now my boyfriend, but at the time, we were really close friends. He was devastated and could barely function. He called me and asked me to come over and help him with the funeral preparations. He and his dad had to go out and buy a coffin and all other things necessary for the funeral. At the same time, they expected a visit from their relatives from another city. So I came over and he and his dad went out to buy the stuff they needed. I remained in their house, cleaning around and preparing a meal for the relatives who were expected to arrive the next next day. Suddenly, somebody rang the doorbell. I opened it and saw my boyfriend's aunt and uncle, sister and brother-in-law of the deceased. I didn't even have time to say my condolences. As soon as the aunt saw me, she started yelling at me. Who the hell are you and what are you doing here? I told her that I was there to help my friend and his father around the house and with funeral preparations. She knew me. She knew who I was. But obviously, she pretended to not know who I was. She told me to get out of the house. I didn't want to make any waves, so I went out, sat on the porch, and had a few smokes. 30 to 45 minutes later, the aunt and uncle came out of the house, carrying some bags and boxes in their hands. I immediately realized that they were nothing but vultures, but I decided to keep things as civil as possible for the sake of my friend, his dad, and his deceased mom, who was a great lady and a very nice person, totally the opposite of her sister. So I told them that they should wait for my friend and his dad to come back home. I was polite as possible in that awkward moment. I even said, it would mean a lot to them if they could see you in this horrible moment. But the sister of the deceased started yelling at me again. Who the fuck do you think you are? This is my sister's house. Again, I took a deep breath and replied as calmly as I could. Yes, I know, but this is also my friend's and his dad's house, and until they're back, I am responsible for everything that happens here in their absence. She kept yelling and fuming. I tried to reason with her husband and told him, imagine my situation. When they're back, they'll think it was me who stole these things. So please, wait for their return. Pretty please. But the harpy wouldn't shut up or let him speak. She kept screaming and yelling, throwing all kinds of insults and threats to my face. I am not a person who'd remain calm or silent. After all, I'm an Aries, but it wasn't on my territory. And the woman I knew and adored had just passed away. And I really didn't want to bicker with her sister. I just wanted to calm the situation down before my friend and his dad returned. They were both devastated and this was the last thing they should see or hear. So I let her scream at me, but remained adamant. I will not let you leave with these things until the two of them return. I'm not going to be accused of stealing, and it is definitely the best for all of us. Please calm down and wait for their return. They should be back any minute now. Luckily, I'm a tall woman and tough, former volleyball player and swimmer. I'm six feet tall, and I was standing between them and a stairwell that led down to the front yard. At one moment, I felt like Gandalf when he faced Balrog and told him, you shall not pass. And given my temper, I believe they knew I meant business. So she couldn't get down from the porch and all she could do was yell. Two neighbors from next door heard her screaming and came to see what was going on. I was at the verge of exploding, calling the cops or even my friend. But luckily, the neighbors came and asked what was going on. The aunt then screamingly explained to them that a stranger wouldn't let her leave, that the deceased was her sister, and so on. This bought me some time and eventually, my friend and his dad returned home. The aunt and uncle flew out of there the minute they returned and had to leave all the stuff behind and go home empty handed. I had a splitting headache and I can't even imagine how my friend and his dad felt. 
Later, we looked at the content of the bags and boxes they were trying to take away. They had all of the most valuable items from the house packed, including my friend's expensive laptop, and he's a graphic designer. That is his workplace. As well as jewelry his father inherited from his mother and grandmother, an expensive camera, the deceased woman's very expensive iPhone, and several other valuable items. The aunt and uncle didn't show up at the funeral. I promise you, if they had showed up, I would have barked at them as a fucking Kerberos and chased them away. I was furious. I don't remember me ever being that furious as I was that day. How in the world could someone be such a vulture? It was her sister. I think I felt more sorry for the loss of that woman than her sister was. Wow, what despicable human beings. OP handled that whole situation really well. I commend her restraint. Stalling long enough for the boyfriend and dad to arrive was definitely the right course of action. There's really no point in escalating a situation like this with greedy idiots such as the sister and her husband. I'm so glad they didn't get away with anything. I'm going to read a few equally as rage-inducing mini-stories from this comment section of other people's instances with narcissistic vultures. When I was 27, my best friend and roommate passed unexpectedly in his sleep. He had a seizure and asphyxiated. Before the medics had even wheeled his body out, his vulture family members showed up to take inventory. My girlfriend at the time, now wife, was the only thing that kept kept me from losing it. My friend was worth a substantial amount of money and his family knew it. I had to sit and watch as his aunt and uncle, both of which he despised, went through and tallied up everything that they thought was of value. I still hate them to this day, especially when I think about all of the holidays my friend and I spent together and these people were never around. Not until he died. I gave his eulogy at his funeral and these people insisted that someone from their side also speak to keep up with appearances. One of his uncles called me a few days before the service and as he was asking me questions, I realized this man is writing his eulogy based off of my knowledge and love for his nephew. I was appalled. This same uncle went on to give a eulogy before me and during his speech he listed my friend's birth and death dates and he gave the wrong birthday. When it was my turn to speak I was extremely tempted to cut a scathing promo but it would have only served my own desires at the time so I relented. I did however correct his uncle on my best friend's birthday before I left the podium. I wanted everyone there to know these people were fucking scum and were only there because of his wealth. My friend hated these people legit hated them and it tore me up to witness them act like his death was a boon to them. My friend ultimately knew who these people were as he left 100% of his wealth, several million dollars, to the one grandparent who had always been there for him. I don't know why I shared this with you OP other than maybe I felt some sort of connection to your story. I guess at the end of the day most people are just shitty people at their core but at least we got to live and love with the good ones before we tasted the shit. This happened at my grandfather's death. He died when I was two, but my aunt came to help the week he died and left with a van full of stuff. My grandmother was too upset about Pop to care. She even took her wedding album. 25 years later, Nan is 92 and dying and wants to see it. She had asked a few times before, but was always told that it was being copied or Aunt was too busy. Aunt made a 92-year-old woman beg for her own wedding album. She brought it, then I hid everything of value from her room, and we changed the locks after Nan died. God, the way people can just swoop in and take advantage of others during a time of ultimate vulnerability while grieving is just disgusting. I literally want to slap all of those people from these stories and give granny from the last one a hug. I truly will never understand how some people end up so emotionless, so unempathetic, and so selfish. But other than letting these types of people turn you bitter, instead, take it as a reminder to never act like this or be like this. And in fact, 
use their shitty behavior as inspiration to be a better person to make up for them. But anyways, that is all for me today. I hope you enjoyed these Entitled People stories. Well, not enjoyed rather, but I hope you got some value from it. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. I truly appreciate when you do, and I will see you in the next Reddit story. Bye!